What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. It's been a while, but I'm finally back to continue my Nuzlocke of Pokemon Shining Pearl. If you missed any of the previous videos in the series, I encourage you to check them out. But for now, let's jump back into our adventure. To start things off, we have a rival battle with Barry. Because he just can't seem to leave us alone. He leads with Starly and we send out Squoop. It's faster, so we take a little damage for Pluck. We then hit it back with a super effective engine power, but it survives. It hits us hard with Endeavor, taking a good chunk out of our HP in the process. Barry's not messing around this time. But luckily, we land our Ice Beam to finish off Starly before it could do any more damage. Next up is Barry's Grottle. Squoop's at quite the disadvantage, so I swap it for Pico. Pico's Intimidate weakens Grottle's physical attack. Then we take a small bit of damage from Razor Leaf before firing off an Aerial Ice which does massive damage but doesn't quite get the KO. It uses Bite, but thanks to Intimidate, there's nothing to worry about, allowing us to finish it off with a quick attack. It's Buizel's turn. We're slower, so we take a little damage from Aqua Jet, but hit back hard with Aerial Ice. Buizel barely knew what hit him. Barry then sends out Ponyta, so we launch another Aerial Ace, once again taking out a Pokemon with a single hit. And unfortunately for Barry, that's his last Pokemon, so we walk away with another victory. But now that we've dealt with Barry's minor interruption, let's continue chasing that Grunt. He keeps trying to avoid us, but eventually we wear him down to a point where he insists on a battle. This won't take long. Then we bump into Cynthia, and she gives us the secret medicine to help the Psyduck on Route 210. So that's where we're heading next. After giving the medicine to the Psyduck, they run off. Then Cynthia catches up to us. If you were heading here anyway, why'd we have to bring the medicine? But whatever. She then gives us an old charm to deliver to her grandma in Slustic Town. I guess we're her errand boy, but ain't same for you Cynthia. We then start heading to Slastic Town, defeating many trainers. Along the way, Scoop and Pablo both evolve into their final forms. This will surely help us in the battles ahead. On this route, Bonsley is our first encounter, so we catch her. Hopefully she'll stay safe in the box and won't be required during this playthrough. But we nickname her Bonnie to keep up with naming every Pokemon we capture. After numerous battles, we find ourselves in Slastic Town. Team Galactic is up to no good, like always, so we have to deal with that situation. But after defeating the Grunt in our way, we give Cynthia's grandma the old charm. Check out some cool paintings, get a history lesson, and meet some guy. I'm sure he won't be important. Then once all that's finished, we fly back to Hartholm City to confront Fantina and finally get our next gym badge. Fantina's gym presents us with a series of questions. If we get the answers right and choose the correct door, we don't have to fight any gym trainers before reaching Fantina. I could have gotten some of them wrong on purpose to earn extra experience, but this is a Nuzlocke, so I'd rather not fight more trainers than I have to. So, we just breeze through all the rooms in the gym until we reach Fantina. She specializes in ghost types, so we need to be careful if we want to come out of this unscathed. Let's do it. Fantina starts off with Drift Blim, and we send out Volt, giving ourselves a decent type advantage. Unfortunately, Drift Blim is faster, so it hits us with Strength Sap, lowering our attack. We use Volt Switch, but with our attack lowered, we can't get the KO. Unfortunate, but not the end of the world. We switch to Batman to try to finish the job. Luckily, we move first, and Bite takes out Drift Blim. We get a little parting gift in the form of Drift Blim's aftermath, but we should still be fine. Fantia then sends out Gengar, so we try for Super Sonic, and luckily the attack hits, confusing Gengar. And with even more luck, it hurts itself in confusion, allowing us to survive the turn unharmed. Next, we go for Air Cutter, which doesn't do as much damage as I would have preferred. And it also triggers Gengar's Cursed Body, disabling the move. Our luck seems to have run out as Gengar snaps out of Confusion and retaliates with Confuse Ray. Things are getting risky, but we attempt to hit Gengar back with Bite, which should be super effective. However, it's holding a Cold Berberry, weakening our attack. This allows Gengar to remain on the field, but Bite causes it to flinch, so we're still in this fight. We go for another Bite, but Fantina uses a Hyper Potion. Ugh, oh, come on. This time it's super effective, but still not enough to finish the fight. But since we're faster, one more Bite is finally able to knock out Gengar. Now it's time for her ace, Miss Magius. Bite has served us well, so we go in for another. It takes out over half her HP, but then we once again get hit by a Confuse Ray. It's a risky play, but I go for another Bite. We don't hit ourselves and land the attack, finishing off Miss Magius and defeating Fantina, earning ourselves the Relic Badge. Phew, that battle stressed me out, especially against Gengar. It was a real back and forth, and with worse luck we could have lost some team members, but everyone survived. But I think I'm going to wrap things up for now. Thanks for watching. I hope to start getting these episodes up on a more frequent basis. So hit that like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you want to catch up with the series, 
I encourage you to check out that playlist here. Or, if you're in the mood for something different, here's a cool video I did giving all the Johto Gym Leaders new teams. But, I hope you'll have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.